Welcome back to Reading Bear. Today, we will take a look at some new Pori Ranch stories. And if you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comments. Let's go! The first one is titled, Don't Mess With My Family. This happened long, long ago. Someone suggested I post it on here, so I'm finally getting around to doing it. My sister gave me permission in that I asked her and she said, what the hell is Reddit? Don't send naked pictures to hackers. So, not that I was planning on it, but none of you all are getting naked pictures. My sister is mental as in legit medications needed chronic and lifelong, but a great mum. We come to this agreement early on in her mental health crises point that no matter how paranoid or awful it is, she tells me everything that's going on with her and I can give her feedback with no judgment. It works well. Sometimes I tell her she's right. Sometimes I tell her she's delusional. Sometimes I tell her she's being an idiot and to knock it off. She's told me everything since we were teenagers, and to this day it hasn't changed. She will lie to everyone. And she's a good liar, don't get me wrong, but she won't lie to me. Because I know when she's lying, I call her out on it. And we move on. We have established this relationship because she needed a coping mechanism for if, when she lost touch with reality and she knew she needed one person to trust and keep herself grounded. This is before we knew anything about professional psych help, we were kids. And it still works for us, so it's all good. Finally, let me state that theirs was a marriage doomed from the start, and they both did things to contribute to its downfall. This is not a story about me taking revenge over some stupid married fight or whatnot. A little background, my sister and I are very close. I practically raised her so I mama bear the duck out of any threats to her happiness and safety. We had an awful childhood, and she, my brother and I survived and have close bonds because of it, but we didn't leave it undamaged. My sister is bipolar and has these crazy paranoid and depressive episodes sometimes. She's been on meds for a long time, and for the most part they work. When she was 19 our ma died and she made a series of shitty life choices which resulted in her marrying her high school sweetheart and having three kids in two years, one year she had twins. He wasn't a bad guy, they were just too young. So, about eight years go by. They are tumultuous years because sister is crazy, Bill is young and lacks intelligence, book smart but not life smart. Let me just mention here as a note that regardless of this all, they are both very good parents and the kids to this day have no idea what went down and they never will as far as we are all concerned. Bill through hard work and negligence to his wife and kids, not really his fault, trying to better himself and generally stupid, gets a master's in education while working full time and manages to snag a full time job teaching as a high school science teacher. Woohoo. Finally, he can start getting home on the weekends and evenings and help with the young'uns. Life is good times. Story of revenge, so in the year or two since Bill has gotten his teaching gig at high school he has proven himself to not only be good at his job, but immensely popular with students. Good on him. The world needs more good teachers. But my sister is unhappy. More and more she's confiding to me that she thinks Bill is cheating on her. Turns out the art teacher at the school and he have been co-sponsoring a lot of student clubs together and whatnot. He has gotten his ear pierced and started to dress cooler. I just let her vent. Her marriage problems aren't mine to solve, and being a good sister I stay the shit out of them. Things start getting weirder. Bill was hella conservative and religious. Suddenly he is sponsoring the gay, straight student alliance with the art teacher. Awesome, says me. Sister is getting more suspicious. Tells me they keep, accidentally, running into art teacher when they are out with kids. Art teacher is married to superintendent and has kids around her boy's age, the kids like to play together. This is happening over the course of a year, just so you know, not all of a sudden. My calls to my sister are getting more frantic. I'm thinking she needs to get her meds adjusted so she does and it calms her down but she's still convinced something is going on. They have a lot of text fights at this point, they don't argue in front of the kids. Crap is starting to escalate. But being the good sister, I stay out of the marriage. Seriously, they could be screwing the entire neighborhood, not my problem. But I can tell things are escalating. She's accusing him of cheating, he's calling her paranoid. He starts staying out later for student activities. This leaves no one to watch the kids so she has to start missing therapy and doctor appointments. I step up and call him on it, he denies everything and tells me that my sister refuses to go. 
I know this is a lie. I don't call him on it, I just take note. My sister has no family near here. My brother and I both live out of state and everyone else is dead or in prison because that's how we roll. So she's alone out there. He puts a passcode on his computer and phone. He tells her it's because she's crazy and he can't trust her to not delete his things. People at her church start shunning her. Her friends start dropping out of her life. She has no idea what the hell is going on. I don't, because we don't swing in the same godly circles, I think if I stepped into a church I'd probably combust or something. She's starting got get unstable because of all of the weirdness. But I can calm her down, keep her in check. She has no friends left at this point except for me. She calls me one day hysterical. She says Bill has her convinced to go check herself into a psych ward because she's delusional. What? I ask her about her delusions, and she tells me about things she found on the computer that she imagined like love letters and crap and they aren't there now. Outside I am calm. Inside I am panicking. My sister has been crazy my whole life. I know when she's having an episode. I can tell by her voice and language. She isn't having one now but convinced of it. I chat with her to calm her down, tell her if she thinks it's a good idea, I can't stop her, but ask if she can wait an extra week because I was flying down the next day to surprise her. She agrees. We hand up, and I buy the next ticket I can get out to go see her and assess the situation. Bill picks me up and starts going off about my sister's mental break, etc. Inward eye rolling going on but I act concerned. Something to note, I've known Bill since he was 10. I can read him like a book. I know when he's lying. He's scared of me. Always has been. He spends the entire damn week on his best behaviors being the husband and father of the year. I know he's up to some crap at this point because this dude is not acting normal. My sister fills me in on the details of what's been going on and I have to agree it sounds shady. I take family to Disneyland while I'm there. This is for three reasons. The first is that I am an awesome aunt. The second is that I ducking love the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Don't hate. And the third is that I'm testing Bill. I know something is up. It's just a matter of weeding out what. We go to D-Land and sure enough art teacher, who I'm going to call which, happens to randomly show up with her kids, surprise seeing you here. We should all hang out. I'm watching everyone. Bill is grinning staring at which who is staring at him. Sister is glaring at the two. Small kids are playing with each other, and Witch's 14-year-old son is glaring at Bill. Aha, I think, my target. We all wander around the park together and I get older son to open up to me as much as an angsty teen boy can over a love of smashing pumpkins and other stupid generic angsty stuff. I casually ask if he hangs out a lot with sister's family. He scowls and says something like, yeah, but at least this time I'm not stuck watching the kids while those two wander off to work. Okay. He says the word work sarcastically. Point gotten little man. I give him $10 on the sly for arcade games. I manage to get my sister alone and basically say you aren't crazy, they're ducking. So we develop the plan. We get home and I offer to take Bill out to dinner and drinks. He spends all of dinner explaining to me how crazy sister is and how she needs to get help and I keep agreeing and buying him beer. We go back home and continue with tequila. I'm getting him shit-faced. I call it a night. Throughout the evening he has been texting on his phone, or checking texts, then locking it back up. I know he's chatting with her, it's all good. It's late. Kids are sleeping, sister is in dark hallway waiting for the moment. I join her. The moment comes. Bill puts down his phone without locking it and falls asleep on the couch. We grab it and go back to her room. He is having active sex chat with which. So I continue the conversation asking her to send me some nasty pics. I get a lot of them. All of which I forward to my phone. We go through his messages and find out he's been gaslighting my sister. The plan was to get her committed, and file for custody while she was in the hospital and a divorce. They had been married over 10 years at this point and he was hoping this would allow him to not have to give her much in the divorce. In California, over 10 years you automatically get half. You know that siren music that comes on in Kill Bill when Uma Thurman gets upset? I heard it. Listen, my sister is a difficult person. You can duck whoever you want and divorce her, I don't blame you. Not my problem. But this? Getting her committed and taking the kids? Hell no. 
Mama Bear has awakened. I store the pictures, like I said earlier, then use his phone to send all the pics to her husband. I forgot to mention she was married? Yes, to the superintendent of the school district, who happened to be a running buddy with my bill. Then I give the phone back to my sister. My sister has a new light in her eyes. Her spark is back. She was never crazy. She has purpose now. She's going to fight. And I let her. This is her battle. And one she needs to do on her own. In true form of the women in my family she wakes him up gently by throwing the phone at his face. The fight to end all fights commence. Kids are far away and sleep like the dead. I stay with them to make sure they stay asleep. It's all good. This is all happening at around 3 in the morning. About 10 in the morning which calls Bill hysterical because husband saw pics. Kids had been taken to school already. Bill starts yelling at sister. I step up and said I sent them. He tries to yell at me, but then his voice kind of dies down and he just leaves. Like I said. He's scared of me. He comes back later and packs up his crap. It's safe to leave sister to her own devices. I head back home, dirty pics in tow. Weeks go by as both parties lawyer up and normal divorce drama happens. One day sister call me crying. She went to buy dinner for the kids and card is declined. He had taken all of the money out of the account. Wire her some money and tell her not to worry, it was probably a bank mistake and I'd call the bank for her, she has bad phone anxiety when talking to strangers, I often call places pretending to be her to take care of business. I don't call the bank. My sister had no idea any of the following occurred until years later. Instead, I take one of the dirty pictures, blur out the face, post it private to Facebook so only me and the tagged people could see, can you even do that anymore, and tagged him on it. Then I go watch a movie. Got to turn that phone off. Don't want to get interrupted during my umpteenth viewing of Juice Bigelow. When I turn on my phone I have so many missed calls, voicemails, text messages. I only reply back with this, put the money back. Behave yourself. Or this gets posted to your high school Facebook page. I refuse to answer any more texts or calls from him. I ask my sister to let me know when the bank put the money back into the account. She had it in the hour, and I deleted the photo. Throughout the two years of divorce proceedings every time he misbehaved, acted like a jerk, or was skimping out on father duties, I'd text him a dirty picture and he would suddenly clean up his act. It's been years now. He is married to which? They are both still very popular high school teachers at the same school. My sister is a stronger person for this and has gone on to do really good things for herself. I'm very proud of her. And every so often I send a text to Bill with a dirty pic to remind him to behave himself. When the youngest graduates high school in a few years I'll delete them. Don't duck with my family. The next one is titled, take a dump in my storeroom and expect to get away with it. Well I have news for you. Background information, so I work as a caretaker in a school, in a rather low socioeconomic area. My job is to look after all the hirers and contractors, and clean the campus in between, vacuuming, mopping etc. On Saturdays, the campus is host to two language schools, when I started shift where this story began, the second language school was using level 2 of the main building. So, where it begins, now I was cleaning, as usual where I'd normally be at around that time of the day, one of the language schools had left and so I was now cleaning the top level where they had been using, vacuuming and collecting rubbish. I had just finished cleaning the computer room of the top floor, and had left the door open whilst I went into the next room and started vacuuming, my normal procedure. But, about 5 minutes into the second room, I hear noises coming from the computer room which was what I just cleaned, and I said to myself, oh it's probably just some kids who have snuck upstairs whilst the language school downstairs is on break, so I proceed to go into the room, to find 3 young boys, most likely around the ages of 10 to 12 laying down on the tables and mucking around, they see me, and run under the desks to hide, in quite an obvious fashion. I do my normal yada yada and they move on, exclaiming that they are with the language school and I watch them go back down the stairs. Awesome, I can now get back to work, I say to myself. However, about 5 minutes later, back they are, except this time they're down the other end of the wing of the building, yelling and playing around in the most far end staircase. So I asked them why they were back up here when the language school's break had just finished, for notice these staircases are left open so the kids can get out at lunch, and they giggled in typical 10-year-old fashion, and began to run away. 
So at this point, I said out loud, so we're running now are we, and chased after them, expect I went down a different flight of stairs and cut them off. At this stage one had caught on to the fact that they weren't really with the language school, in fact far from it. One of the boys I managed to corner and had the principal of that school monitor while I chased down the other two boys. After about two minutes of running, they attempted to hide from me at the other end of the campus near where the basketball arena is located. It's small courtyard. I caught them in the corner of my eye and approached them with a rather authoritative voice. Now, there was three to four minutes of me getting them to explain what the hell they were mucking around for, when I discovered with my eyes, a massive turd, sitting on the ground, right in my storeroom's doorway. Which they had attempted to mask by using my dry and wet mops, and brooms to spread all over the concrete. I was at wit's end, I was so angry. I kept my cool of course, and brought those two mischief makers back to their friend and made them cough up. At this stage, it was known to me that they were involved in the basketball program, just not today and they were having their typical snoop of the campus grounds. It was about now that I put my foot down, because I needed to get on with my other duties. I brought them over to the basketball arena, where I asked the coordinator over there if she knew the boys, which she confirmed that she did. One of the boys was meant to be there that day, the other two she vaguely knew from Tuesday basketball. She says, what have these boys done, she knew from the tone of my voice, that I was not impressed with them. So I take her about 20 meters around the corner and showed her the massive turd they left for me to clean up that was spread over the concrete in the doorway of my cleaning storeroom. She was gobsmacked, and told the boys to clean it up, whilst in disgust. However, I had to give them some stuff to help them clean it up with right? Now I have all sorts of chemicals and a hose that I could have used to clean it up in a couple minutes, but no no no, these boys were getting some petty revenge for their actions. So I gave them the most shit of paper towels I had, the kind that fall apart almost instantly, and told them, it's all I've got, get to work. These boys were on their hands and knees cleaning up the turd they had left, and because of the paper towels, they were literally covered in their own crap. I had the biggest grin on my face, as when it happened all I could think of was posting this onto Reddit. So I hoped you enjoyed, because it was damn well funny for me. Revenge is sweet. The next one is titled, I destroyed a brewery. Nearly 20 years ago, I was a brewer at a brew pub. The owner was a complete lunatic and an utter a hole. Before I was hired, he had already purchased the brewery equipment, used, from a closed microbrewery. Problem is, it was literally four times larger than it needed to be for the size of the place, and to top it off he was selling big three beers too and it was a Pugsley system, brewers will know. But I made it work, even got the stupid ringwalled yeast to behave. But I only need to brew about three or four times a month, I have worked at places we brewed that much a week, so I wasn't needed anywhere near 40 hours per week. And I was salaried. So he decided I needed to work night manager at least two nights a week, to fill out my hours. That was fine, it was an easy gig. After our first year, he advertised a huge anniversary event, with specials on food and drink. Food specials. Commercial beer specials. And didn't even mention that we made our own, much less put anything on special. Idiot. Not too long after, I got my first vacation in over a year. And he was mad at me for insisting. But life was stressful, not least of which because my mum was in hospice, stage 4 cancer. But her condition was such that she said my wife and I should go, she'll be fine. So we went camping for a week. The day before our trip was to end, we got word she had died. Two days earlier. My family didn't know how to reach us, only she did. We rushed home, six hour drive, and on the way I called my boss and told him what had happened, and that I probably would not be in on Monday as planned, this was Saturday. I found out later from a bartender that he then witched at the chef that I was probably going to want more time off. I did in fact take Monday off, but I went in on Tuesday to do my night manager shift. Now, my mum's wishes were to be cremated, with no embalming, so by the time I got home, she was already cremated. So the memorial service was planned for two weeks later, right before Labor Day weekend. There was to be a memorial service Thursday, and the interment for the family Friday. So I planned and made sure that the servers were full and I wouldn't need to brew for at least a week. That Wednesday the boss comes and tells me, he wants me to work night shift on Thursday and Friday, normally I did Tuesday and Wednesday nights, to make up for the time off I'd taken to help my dad out, he wasn't handling it well. He wanted me to come in after my mum's funeral. I flatly refused, at which point he said fine, but I'd have to work a double shift Saturday then. I nearly lost it. 
I walked away, and after I cooled off I went back and told him I was no longer going to do the manager shifts, and that I wanted to switch to hourly for brewery work only. He was angry, but stuck. He needed me in the brewery. Things started calming down, but after a few weeks I noticed my paychecks were for less than I anticipated. I hadn't been tracking my clock in, clock out very closely, because prior to this I only clocked in and out so I was logged in to do manager functions, but I happened to have a couple of slips in my wallet, and because I still had manager access, discovered he had been altering my hours, eventually cheating me out of around 20 hours in just 6 weeks. And that's when I hatched my plan. I was done with this a whole. Remember that Ringwood yeast? Well, in a brewery, you harvest yeast from a fermenting batch to use to brew a later one. And since we were slow, it often had to be stored for a while before it got used. But you had to use it within 30 days, 21 is better, or it goes sour and starts dying. Normally I would take other steps to ensure it stayed clean and healthy, but not on the last batch I harvested. It just went into the cold room. And stayed there. I stopped going in very often, just logging tank levels to make sure nothing ran out and made him suspicious. I would even go in to make sure he wasn't in that day, and later message him that I'd brewed, I hadn't. And waited. On day 45, after I got the check for the last hours I worked, I overnighted my keys in with a resignation letter. He called me the next day, screaming. I told him I knew what he'd done, and I wouldn't be back. I don't know what he looked like when he went into the brewery cellar and discovered he had empty fermenters, nearly empty serving tanks, dead yeast, and almost no grain. Pity really. After that, he tried to hire my former assistant, who was working at another brewpub by then because the a-hole had forced me to fire him to save money. He laughed at him. He then apparently got the underage son of one of the brewers at a nearby brewpub which he had originally been part of to brew for him, but had to fire him because the kid kept getting caught drunk down in the cellar. So he tried doing it, and I had heard they stopped brewing entirely eventually. About a year after I left, he folded. Staff showed up one morning to padlock doors. Drove through there a few years back, not only gone but building was torn down. I felt like stopping to sow the ground with salt, but I was in a hurry. The next one is titled, she had her letter of resignation ready just in case. It was my supervisor. It got to the point that I had decided to quit. I had my resignation letter in my purse, but decided to let his boss know why I was quitting. Supervisor would talk about all the people on our team constantly, but only behind their backs. I got so sick of telling him to cut it out. My husband and I happened to work at the same place, different departments, and my supervisor would make inappropriate comments about threesomes, with him, what hotel we picked for our afternoon delight, stuff like that. It was so uncomfortable. Apart from this, he spent most of his time outside smoking. Problem was supervisor was one of the guys and I was the only girl. I told his boss, and he lost his mind. They started an investigation which took three days. They interviewed staff who all corroborated what I said. They checked the security cameras, saw he was spending most of his work day outside smoking. At the end of it, he was fired. When he was told he guessed, wasn't hard, that I was the person who complained and tried to get to me to apologize that I took it the wrong way. The best feeling was my co-workers surrounding me as he was walked out. That was a lovely ending to it all. The last one is titled, Vacation Time Added Up. As the low man on the totem pole, I got to do all the grunt labor and random tasks that required working on weekends and such, as a master engineer working in a 9 to 5 job, being paid less than a pizza delivery driver. Then my boss decided that I no longer got to comp time, leave early or whatever to get back some time spent working on weekends, because I was salaried and it was part of the job. So, when I quit to go get my PhD, they realized that I hadn't used any vacation time. The ultra penny pincher had to write me a check for two extra months worth of pay as I walked out the door. Thanks for listening.